Today is a very special day. Do you know what holiday it is today? If you guessed Father's Day, you are right. So Father's Day is a day that we can use to celebrate lots of people. For example, we can celebrate your dad. You can say thank you to your dad. You can give him a big hug. You can make him a card or a special present. But you can also say thank you to lots of other people who are fathers. For example, maybe you have a grandpa. He's a father, right? You could say thank you to him or happy Father's Day to him. Or maybe you have someone else in your life that you know is a father. Do you guys have cousins? Well, maybe you could talk to your uncle, who is the dad of your cousins, and say, Happy Father's Day! And there's a few other people you could say Happy Father's Day to also. And it might not be somebody that you would think about on Father's Day. I want you guys to sit and think for a second and think to yourself, do I know somebody who's a man who has really impacted my life? Whoa, that's a big word, isn't it? So impacted means that they've done something really special or important in your life. Maybe they've taught you about something. You got to learn something really cool from them. Like maybe there's somebody that you've learned how to play the guitar from, or they taught you how to build a really awesome Lego structure. Or maybe it's somebody you know that helps out in your classroom, like a teacher, or somebody that helps out here in children's church. So I want you guys to think of somebody that you can say Happy Father's Day to that might not necessarily be your dad, but someone special who has done something in your life that was really kind or really important, that you learned something from, that they helped you with, and I want you to tell them that you love them. So I want you guys just to think of somebody like that and to try to remember to do something special for one of those people today. All right, well, let's think about our schedule. We just did our ah, la, 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 la. Next, we're gonna go to Jimmy, and hopefully we'll hear a few jokes from him. And maybe he'll talk about the word of the day. Maybe he'll talk about the Lord's Prayer again. We'll have to see. And then next, we'll do Bible story time. After that, there'll be offering and prayer. Then Amanda. And then we'll come back here to finish off with some music time. All right, well, I hope you guys have a great time with Jimmy. See you soon. Good morning, Children's Church. Did you hear that today is a special day? That's right, it's Father's Day. And for our jokes today, I wanted to share some jokes that you can use for that. Ready? <clears throat> What did the daddy buffalo say to its son before it left for school? Bye, son! So, uh, buffalo and bison are animals that are so similar to each other. Sometimes we call the same animals either word. And it sounds like, bye, son. <clears throat> what do you call a dad who's really cold? You'd call him Popsicle. You know, because some people call their dad Pop, and Popsicles are really cold. How do dads feel about beards? Well, sometimes they, they don't like them at first, but then the beards grow on them. You know, because when you say that something grows on you, it means you didn't like it at first, but then you, you got to like it better over time. And beards, you know, grow. What did baby corn say to mama corn? It said, where's popcorn? Hey, those are pretty fun, right? 
It's amazing how much our parents can love us and take care of us and teach us things. So it's great to have reminders like today to thank them and tell them we love them. Now, do you remember what I talked about with you guys last week? I shared what my mom taught me about the beginning of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. Well, the next part of the prayer is a little confusing. Hallowed be thy name. We're still talking to God, our Father in heaven, but I had no idea what the word hallowed meant. It made a lot more sense when my mom taught me what it really means, though. So now I'll share it with you. So, to hallow something, or to make it more hallowed, means to make it holy, or treat it as being holy. That sounds pretty simple, right? Except I realized that even though we use the word holy a lot, I wasn't sure exactly what that meant either. It turns out that the most basic meaning of the word holy is actually to be separate from other things. So to make something holy or to treat it as being holy would mean setting it apart from other things because it's special. More than just being separate, though, when we use the word holy, we mean things are special because they have something to do with God. God is incredibly holy. He is separate from everything he's created, and he's perfectly good, separate from the sin that, that affects the whole world. That's so important that the Bible doesn't just tell us that God is holy. It tells us that God is holy, holy, holy. So, getting back to the Lord's Prayer, when we pray, hallowed be thy name, it's a reminder to us of how incredibly holy God is. We can pray to him because he's our father, but he's not just like a dad here on earth. He's holy, like no one else in the whole world. And not only are we reminding ourselves of how amazingly holy he is, we are also praying that the whole world would learn about him and get to know him by following Jesus. Isn't that great? Well, it's time to listen to our story for this week, so I better go. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. friends did you have a good time learning more about the lord's prayer from jimmy today well i was kind of thinking i know we've been doing a series on parables parables that jesus told those are like stories but they have a special meaning to them and we've been talking about a lot of different parables but i was thinking we haven't talked about the time when jesus taught the lord's prayer and I thought that would be a really great story to cover. So we're going to do that today with our Jesus Storybook Bible. And I know a lot of you friends have this at home, so this is really exciting. You could even go grab your Storybook Bible if you want to follow along. And I'll tell you, we're on page 222. How to pray. In those days, there were some extra super holy people. At least, that's what they thought. And they were called the Pharisees. Every day, the Pharisees would stand out there in the middle of the street and pray out loud in big, extra, super holy voices. They really weren't praying so much as showing off. They used lots of special words that were so clever, no one understood what they meant. People walking by would stop and stare, which might sound rude, except that's exactly what the Pharisees wanted. They wanted everyone to say, wow, look at them. 
The Pharisees are so holy, God must love those people the best. Now, you and I both know that's wrong. God doesn't just love holy people. But the people walking around and watching, they weren't so sure. Perhaps you did have to be really clever or really good or really important for God to love you. Maybe you had to know lots of difficult, clever words to speak to God. So one day, Jesus taught people the importance of prayer and how to pray. He said, when you pray, don't pray like those extra super holy people. They think that if they say lots of words, God will hear them. But it's not because you're so clever or good or so important that God will listen to you. God listens to you because he loves you and you don't have to do anything special for him to love you. Did you know that God is always listening to you? Did you know that God can hear the quietest whisper deep inside of your heart before you've even started to say it? Because God knows exactly what you need even before you ask him, Jesus told them. You see, God just can't wait to give you all that you need. So you don't need to use long words or special words. You don't have to use a special voice. You just have to talk. So when you pray, pray in your normal voice, just like when you're talking to someone that you love very much like this. So this is the part of the book where I'm going to read a special version of the Lord's Prayer. And this isn't the one that we say in church. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But instead, it's using different words to tell you the exact same thing. So I wanted to read this so you could start to understand some of the different parts of the Lord's Prayer. And like Jimmy's been doing each week, he'll continue to help us understand more and more about the Lord's Prayer. Hello, Daddy. We want to know you. And we want to be close to you. Please show us how. Make everything in the world right again. In the world, and in our hearts too. Do what is best, just like what you do in heaven, and please do it down here on the earth too. Please give us everything that we need for today. Forgive us for doing wrong things and for hurting you. Forgive us just like we forgive other people when they hurt us. Rescue us, save us, we need you. We don't want to keep running away and hiding from you. Keep us safe from our enemies. We know you are strong. You can do whatever you want, God. You are in charge. Now and forever and for always, we think you are great. Amen. Yes, we do. You see, Jesus was showing people that God would always love them with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. So the people, they didn't need to hide anymore. They didn't need to be afraid or ashamed. They could stop running away from God and they could run to him instead just like a little child runs into her daddy's arms
So today, like I mentioned before, we're celebrating Father's Day. And that includes so many different people in our lives. And you know who's the best dad ever? If you said God, you're right. And that was something that was so special. When Jesus taught the people the Lord's Prayer, he told them to start with, Hello, Daddy. Or like how we say it in the sanctuary, Our Father. It was amazing that Jesus was telling the people that they could call God their very own Father. Because that meant that He loved them so much that He was like a dad to them. Isn't that amazing? Because many people thought, well, God is so big and so strong and important. Maybe he doesn't see me, or maybe he doesn't notice me, or maybe he doesn't care about me. But Jesus was saying that God cares about us just like a father cares about his children. All right, well, that's it for story time. So let's get ready for offering. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to go find an offering basket. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. It could be a plastic bowl from your kitchen, a tub from your room, or even the lid to a plastic tub. You can use whatever you can find for your very own offering basket. So go find your offering basket, we'll play some music, and when you get back, we'll start our offering time.
Okay, so you've got your offering basket. Great. What we're going to do is we're going to take our hand and gently place it in the bottom of the basket. And that tells Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to give you my heart today, which is a very, very special offering that you can give to Jesus. And all it means is you're saying, Jesus, I love you. come up here and help her with the crafts today because it's something that's a little bit tricky and so she wanted some help from a grown-up. Isn't that right Amanda? 
yeah, I, I know sometimes I've asked you for help on crafts, but, but this one especially, the folding I think is going to be really, really hard. Yeah, so there's a part in here that you kind of have to fold things back and forth. And I know some friends are really great at doing that already. And some friends are still learning. And so I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. Because Amanda, you're still learning how to do the fold, right? Yeah. So Amanda wanted just a little bit of help. All right. So Amanda, do you want to explain what craft we're doing today? Yeah, sure. Um, So we're going to do a special Father's Day craft. A special Father's Day craft. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, we have markers, scissors and glue, and what else? Um, paper and stickers. All right, so Amanda, what is it that we are going to make? We're, we're gonna make an award ribbon. An award ribbon? Do you guys know what she's talking about? Um, Amanda, w what do you mean by an award ribbon? Oh, um. You, you know, like like if you run a race and then you get a big award, like like a big ribbon. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so you know how sometimes when people run races, maybe they'll get a big trophy or maybe a medal they wear on their neck, but sometimes people can get a ribbon. And it looks like kind of a circle with like some other like ribbon parts sticking out down from the bottom, right? Yeah, and, and you can wear it and, and it looks really cool. Awesome. So... Uh, how exactly are we gonna do it? Well, um, the, the first step is, is is the folding part. So, um, so m maybe maybe you should show everyone how to do it. Okay. All right. So the first step is gonna be the folding part. Um, but we need to get a couple pieces of paper ready first, right? Yeah. Okay. So Amanda, what color do you want to use for your ribbon? Hmm. Well, well let me think about who I'm making it for. Um, I, I'm going to make it for my grandpa. I, I love my grandpa, and I want to tell him Happy Father's Day. Okay, cool. So what colors do you think your grandpa would like? Uh, I, I think green and blue. Green and blue? Awesome. All right, so let's do blue for the bottom part um, and for the folding part. So the first thing you have to do, friends, is you have to fold your paper in half lengthwise. So that means you're going to fold your paper in half, and it's going to look really long um, and after you do that you're gonna have to cut it in half so friends who are really good with scissors um, you can cut it in half friends that need help from a grown-up you can go grab a grown-up and help you cut this in half okay so now that we have this piece of paper cut in half and see how the halves look really long so that means you have to fold it down the long way so now that we have these cut in half, we have to do the special folding back and forth. So I think for this part, we need to get the camera up really nice and close to see how we do it. Okay, so for this part here, we're going to start the folding. So you have to start with your one piece of paper. And when you fold, you're going to fold just a little bit over. So you might like, if you want to know exactly how much to fold, for me, I might hold my pinky or I might hold one of my um, pointer fingers or maybe even a thumb across. Um, if you want to do it a little bit wider, you can do like two fingers and that'll help you to remember exactly how wide you are folding this. So once we have folded it one way, we need to flip it over and fold it back the other way. Now this is kind of tricky, but you have to kind of line it up so that when you fold it over, it is about the same width as the first one. All right, so we folded it over and back to the other side. And we are just going to keep doing this until we get to the very end. Okay, so when you get to the very end, you might have a piece that's not quite long enough to be that whole um, kind of length, but um, that's okay. You can kind of fold it over, and if it's like really, really small, you can just trim it off at the end there. All right, so we have our first bit of folded over, and now we're going to take our second half of the paper, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so now that you have these two pieces, you're going to take both of them and make sure they're all squished together and then you're going to fold them in half. So you got to give it a really nice squeeze to make sure there's a good crease there. Do the same over here. Really nice squeeze. And then we're going to take some glue 
to glue them. So for this part, we want these two pieces to stay together like that and see how it makes kind of a half circle here. So we're going to take this and we're gonna put lots of glue on it, but just on this, um, just on this part right here. Lots of glue, okay. And now we're gonna stick these together and actually you can probably just fold over the whole thing and just squeeze it nice and tight and that should make it stick together. Yay, yay, it's sticking together. And if you need to, you can take your fingers and just kind of like press it in a little bit more. And now let's do the same thing for this side. Okay, great. Now that we have our two halves, now we need to glue them together. So doesn't that look really cool? So for some of you guys, it might be kind of trying to come apart this way. If that's the case, you can have a grown up help you put a staple or two inside of here so that it stays together. Okay, and the next part that we need to do is we need to make a circle for the front. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick my, my um, back piece down on the paper and I'm going to make kind of a little circle shape around it. And I'm gonna try really hard not to color the edges of, of this background part. So we'll trace around this side. Okay. And now we need to cut this piece out, but we need to cut it out a little bit smaller because we don't want it to be this big around. We want it to kind of fit, you know, like in the middle, kind of like this. So let's, um, let's cut this out a little bit smaller. And if you want, you can use something like a cup or something like that to trace, or you can just kind of draw it freehand like what I'm doing right here. And so now I'm just gonna kind of make a circle that's inside of this bigger circle. And now I'm gonna cut that out. Awesome, so now we have this part in the middle and we're gonna ask Amanda how she wants to decorate it. The very last thing that we need to do is we need to make the ribbon parts at the bottom. So for that, we're going to use this leftover paper that we have and we are gonna fold over a little piece of it like this, just so that we have kind of a line to cut on. And we're gonna cut that out. and we're gonna fold it in half. All right, so now that we fold it in half, we're gonna make kind of a little upside down V shape or a mountain shape at the bottom. Like that. And we're gonna use this middle part and cut it in half. So now we have two pieces, so watch this. Here's the top part of our ribbon. And then here is the parts that hang down on the bottom. Isn't that awesome? Okay, Amanda, so now we have um, each of these different pieces made. We have our circle for the middle. We have our accordion piece for behind that circle part. And we have our two little ribbon bits for the bottom. So Amanda, what do you want to say on your middle circle part? Because we should make sure that's written down before we glue it onto here. Because imagine friends, if you were to glue on the circle part onto the accordion part first, it would be really tough to try to write on it afterwards. Can you imagine writing on that, Amanda? Yeah, you, you might even break it. That's true. Imagine if you had already taped down here and then imagine if you were writing on it and then you accidentally smushed it with your hand. Whoopsies. Yeah, that would be bad. It would be bad. So let's write what you want on here first. What do you want to write on there for your grandpa? Uh, can I write, I love you? Oh, Amanda, 
that is a great idea. I love that. Okay, so I'm going to help you right here. Let's write, I love you. And anything else you want to write? Um, maybe happy, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day? Okay, we can do that. Happy Happy Father's Day. Awesome! I love it, Amanda. Is there anything else you want to add to it? Ooh, stickers! Oh, stickers! Yes, I love stickers. Stickers are great to add to just about any craft that you do. Okay, let's look to see what we have here. Ooh, we have some fun sharks and lobsters. Ooh, and fish. All right, Amanda, do you want anything from there? Um, I like the jellyfish. Oh, the jellyfish. Ooh, and there's even blue and green ones here, so it would match. Okay, let's pick out some of those. Do you, do you want the blue and green jellyfish? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, all right, let's do that. And then is there anything else you want from these sticker sheets? Huh. Um, I like, I like, um, I like the seashell. The seashell? Okay, we can do that. All right, so there is one green jellyfish. And let's do a blue jellyfish here. Okay, great. So we have I love you, happy Father's Day, and we have a blue and a green jellyfish and an orange seashell. Okay, so now the very last part that we have to do is we just have to glue on this piece and these two pieces onto our accordion piece. Oh, Amanda, I love it so much. Do you think your grandpa's going to like it? I think he's going to love it. All right, so I think, friends, that Amanda said she wanted to decorate it just a little bit more. Um, Amanda, what were you thinking about doing? Oh, um, I wanted to add some more stickers. Ooh, that sounds good, especially down at the bottom with those ribbons hanging down at the bottom. You could put a lot of stickers there and you could decorate that a whole lot. That's so cool. All right, well, Amanda, I really hope your grandpa loves it. But you know what, guys? I already know he will. What? What? Why? What? 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 But, Miss Christina, what if he doesn't like it? <laughs> oh, Amanda, your grandpa will love anything that you make for him. Even if you're worried that it didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to, it doesn't matter. Your grandpa's going to love it so much because you made it specially for him. Oh, that's, that's really nice. Yeah, it is. And it's because he loves you so much, Amanda. So I'm sure he's going to love this craft that you've made for him. All right, friends. Well, I hope you guys liked learning this new craft from Amanda. And I was so happy that I got to help out today. Maybe I can come back some other time and help with crafts. What do you think, Amanda? Yeah, that would be fun. We, we could work on them together. We could work on them together. All right, well, let's go back to our children's church room downstairs and we can work on some music. See you there. All right, friends, welcome back. We're going to do a couple of songs today, and the first one we're going to do is God Made Me to Jump and Hop. Now, I can't really do a lot of the actions with you guys because some of them are like jumping and hopping and that would be really hard for me to play. Or there's like a swing and sway and that one would be super hard for me to do if I'm playing the guitar. So I'm not going to be doing a lot of the actions, but you guys can do the actions along with me. Ready?
Each day. 
back up at my office and let's check out this strawberry plant okay friends here it is so do you guys remember how last week I was showing you about the runners Wow look at how long they are whoa and I was telling you guys about how strawberry plants like to make more baby strawberry plants and so these are baby strawberry plants so if we get like a cup of dirt and put this inside of the cup of dirt, this will start growing and it'll turn into a big strawberry plant, just like the parent strawberry plant. Um, so those would be the little babies and the parent. And then I have a few strawberries here. Isn't this so funny? Look at these ones. These ones, instead of being like nice and long, is they're kind of short, right? But I bet they will taste delicious. And there's a few other flowers here that might make some more strawberries. Oh, look back here, guys. Do you see these? That's a whole lot of flowers. All right, so we're going to get to see if those turn into strawberries or not. So I'm going to be taking these runners and I'm going to be planting them into um, a cup of dirt and so that they can start growing into a big plant, just like the one that I have right here. All right, well, I know I've been updating you guys on the tomato plant and on the watermelons and the cantaloupe and on the popcorn plant, um, but I haven't been able to go out and buy the dirt to make them their own space yet, and so they're still in their little containers. But by next week, I will have that all in the new big containers, and so I'll be able to update you guys on what they look like. All right, so now that you guys have seen that little update, you know what they look like. And isn't that cool that the watermelon plants are starting to grow some of those extra leaves? Because remember we talked about how the plants start out with a couple of baby leaves and then it starts growing some of the real plant leaves and how they look different. Isn't that so interesting? All right, well, I will give you guys more of an update next week when I get them planted into nice big containers so that they can grow really big and that can they can have really awesome watermelon and cantaloupe and hopefully the popcorn's gonna work. I'm not really sure because I don't get a whole lot of sunshine in that backyard. I get a few hours, so we'll just kind of have to see. All right, well, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope you guys have a really great Sunday. Bye.